the basic question is why French Institute of Social Sciences and CNRS is interested. From the time institute was founded, when it was founded by Jean Filiosa in 1954, 1956, when Pondicherry merged with India, he wanted to have an institute, a unique institution, which is different from the academic institutions in India, which will study the nature and culture of India. So he thought that, okay, the traditional scholarship in India, which needs to be tapped for the Western benefits, Western academic benefits, and institute will become a meeting point for the Western scholarship who comes with their own Western methodology in every field. For example, in science, for example, that's why you have an ecology department here, which studies palynology. You have a botany department here. You have a geomatics department, which works on vegetation mapping of Western Ghats. Then you have an Indology department which was working on Sanskrit and Agamas and the history of Indian religion. Then you have, you also had a department only in the 1980s. After all this, because Indology was covering, Indology and Ecology was covering quite a lot of these areas. Then it was decided in 1980s, Rishat Bushpadas, who is a well-known geographer who was working on agrarian, agrarian, agrarian question in India, in North India and South India, he founded the Social Sciences Department. So that's how the social sciences department, again, going in the same way of studying the nature and culture of India in the approach which could be totally different from the university approach in India. Because you see, in India, hardly you have, you have educating universities, teaching universities. In India, we don't have research universities because Indian setup is totally something that was different. So, Filioza and the, his prayer, his successors wanted to create this place so that anyone can freely come and work with us. For example, it was it was covering all the formal formal academic academia and the informal academia. So there is there are no the boundaries are getting very much blurred here. So that's why the even the social sciences department has got formed by Jacques Bushpadas independently by the institute, completely under the completely under the foreign ministry support and everything. Only later, very much later, with reference to the policies in uh, scientific policy or the political policy or whatever policy in France, CNRS got it. CNRS was a very, very great, very late entrant into the, into the, into the, into this, into this. And so they decided that, okay, then the network of French Institute all over the world, all over the world, the CNRS should also play a role. Because it was, for example, take a call Francis Extremorium. It was under the higher education and research. French take the French Institute, all the French institutes in the world, they were under the foreign ministry, under the foreign policy of the foreign affairs ministry. So they were, I think maybe maybe the CNRS was feeling it was feeling left out. Or the foreign ministry was thinking that okay, we have to rope in CNRS also because it is another gigantic institution which has to chip in also. So CNRS came into play very later. In the 90s, we had no CNRS here. Only at the end of 90s, they were talking about, okay, see, it will also come under the CNRS. So it took about nearly five or seven years to, for CNRS to come in, come in officially and it came into the, then they made this big unit of CNRS, foreign affairs unit all over the world. And Institute is one of the biggest units now in terms of the permanent staff, in terms of the infrastructure. Institute may be the biggest. Institute may be the biggest. And here we particularly, you see, we are in Pandi. Pandi in India and everything, and we don't have a very clear idea of what is CNRS, what is CNRS and what kind of an organization, big organization, and you know, how many units it has and how it functions and everything. Here we know that CNRS now deputes researchers here to work with the institute and everything. CNRS gives some annual funding, but the majority of the funding still comes from the foreign ministry. CNRS gives its, so it's in terms of, in terms of uh, maybe it is a kind of a, a holistic outlook, holistic outlook which CNRS, CNRS, foreign ministry and other organization because you said not only CNRS is involved, IRB is involved, other other French organizations are also research organizations also chip in with reference to the research in the institute. I had a program here which is titled Contemporary Tamil Culture. Here, this is this is contemporary Tamil culture with within the perspective of South South Asia, South Asian studies, South Asian studies. That's the way the American American Academia defines it. And here, what we try to do is, for example, in India, there is no real resource base or a kind of a source base for any kind of contemporary culture studies. 
and here we want to concentrate on what is how we can understand tamil culture which is particularly tamil is a language of 2500 years old which is a classical language and it is a living contemporary language and which has a dynamic literature of its own both contemporary and classical how this literature and culture and its trends how they have made how they adapt themselves and evolve how it has evolved in terms of modern times and modern times and different post modern times and so we try to collect the sources for anyone who wants to study contemporary tamil culture here so far from 1991 even if the institute started in 1956 institute was concentrating more on classical class, classical sanskrit and classical tamil and working on basic reference tools for that and editions for that but in 1991 it is decided that the institute will also concentrate on classical contemporary tamil and culture that means that it is not restricted to the focus on literature itself but it is restricted it is open wide open to the cultural politics and the society which it implicates and then the the whole of diaspora tamil diaspora tamil which is after the sri lankan tamil diaspora in france and canada and everything and how tamil has got widespread in all over the world and what kind of a changes it entails and whether the different aspects for example tamil as its dialects tamil as its tamil as its own creole tamil as its own different kinds of different kinds of cultural expressions in terms of art in terms of cinema in terms of drama in terms of novels and poetry and everything what we try to do is to create a kind of a very basic resource base for this cultural changes and everything that's why we work very closely with the library here which is a library which contains an archive of small journals literary journals political journals from all over the world in tamil so we try to in india particularly in south india or anywhere in none of the indian universities are concentrating on that or we don't have a resource base for that at all so we work very closely with american universities which have south asian studies which have tamil studies or which have dravidian studies and also with also with other european universities so that students can come here and work with us and we guide them and you as you know very well that french institute is a institute which is from autonomous institute functioning under the foreign ministry we don't have any kind of degree giving authority or anything like that we don't give phd degrees or our graduate degrees we are purely a research institution in that way we work with many many phd students who come here and work because they don't have any other resource base other than french institute this is actually i am i am i guide students i write research articles we publish books in terms of translating from tamil contemporary tamil literature into french and contemporary tamil literature into english so we we work work in that way we conduct regularly conferences on different topics in tamil with reference to tamil for example we have recently conducted a conference on what is an archive in india and we have recently conducted conferences on the relationship between sri lanka and tamil sri lankan tamil and tamil nadu tamil so every year we conduct conferences every year we also conduct doctoral workshop for phd students from here and also phd students from abroad so there is kind of a meeting point you can call it as this program particularly provides a meeting point between the western scholarship and the indian scholarship which is available 